What is going on, Lunatic Fringe? May of 2022 marks a very important time for the Luna ecosystem. That was when the collapse started. Harvard did an analysis on what happened, and they did find a very specific culprit. And that very specific culprit, culprit it's exactly who you think it is. It, it, there's no question about it. If you're thinking in your mind, who was the worst subhuman garbage individual who would do something like that, then no, it was not Barry Silbert. <laughs> you hear me? But it was the other guy. So we're going to dig into that just a little bit today, a little off topic, and then we're going to talk about you know what opportunities there are in this ecosystem. Now, before we unpack all this, if you like this content and you want me to continue to provide it, then make sure you hit the like button. And if you if you would, the, the subscribe button, bell to be notified of future content, and engage with some of the sponsors of the channel. Remember, this is brought to you by Terraport. And if you were looking for gaming and uh, burning, Terra Casino is your risk-based gaming asset weeks if you're looking to burn some additional tokens. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. So guys, Harvard Law did an analysis of what exactly happened in 2022 with Terra and the Luna ecosystem. So the collapse of Terra in May of 2022 marked the first major run in cryptocurrency and contributed to the collapse of several other key players in the ecosystem. We provide a detailed analysis of the run and the economics of the Terra network prior to the run. The Terra crash offers valuable insights into the dynamics of the run uh, using expanded data from the Terra blockchain and trading data from on-chain centralized exchanges, we showed that the run on Terra happened across multiple chains and assets. Our analysis suggested it was not the result of targeted market manipulation by a single entity, but rather stemmed from growing concerns about the sustainability of the system. At the center of the collapse was Terra's algorithmic stablecoin, UST, and a blockchain-based borrowing and lending protocol, Anchor. UST was marketed as the first genuine crypto native stablecoin and was a distinguished feature of the Terra network. Unlike other major stablecoins such as Tether or Circle, which are backed by off chain liquid assets, Treasury's UST was not supported by off chain collateral, but by a smart contract that allowed an exchange of one unit of UST to $1 worth of Terra's native currency, Luna, and vice versa. In economic terms, UST was like infinite maturity convertible debt with a face value of $1 backed by Luna. To incentivize the adoption of UST, the Anchor Protocol offered a very high yield of 19.5% to UST depositors, which generated significant inflows of deposits and led to a large increase in UST in issuance. We show that both the deposit and lending rates on Anchor were heavily subsidized. The newly issued UST were used to pay the interest on Anchor deposits and fund other activities. However, as the volume of deposits skyrocketed, the level of subsidies required became increasingly unsustainable. By April of 2022, a daily subsidy level reached $6 million, prompting the Terra community to pass a proposal to gradually decrease the 19.5% interest rate to a more sustainable and market-driven level starting on May 1st of 2022. Contemporary with these developments, there were additional implications of declining network fundamentals. First, following its peak value of 119.18 on April 5 of 2022, the value of Luna experienced a decline in conjunction with general downturn in the value of crypto cryptocurrencies, thereby diminishing the relative market valuation of Luna compared to UST. Secondly, during the latter half of April of 2022, there was a substantial decrease in the entry rate and an increase in the exit rate from Anchor. The first sign of the run appears on May 7 when two large addresses withdrew, withdrew 375 million UST. Blockchain technology enabled investors to closely monitor each other's actions and amplify the speed of the run. However, the complexity of the system was less sophisticated and poor individuals at greater informational disadvantage. We show that wealthier and more sophisticated investors were the first to run and experienced much smaller losses. Poorer and less sophisticated investors not only ran later and had larger losses, but a significant significant fraction of them attempted to buy into the run hoping to buy the dip. The UST peg design was allowed has also allowed users to exit UST by either selling UST directly or exchanging it for Luna and then selling Luna at the market price. As users exchanged UST for Luna, the price of Luna precipitously fell, leading to an increasing dilution, which further depressed the price of Luna and resulted in a dramatic death spiral, where over just three days, the Luna supply increased from $1 billion to $6 trillion, and the Luna price decreased from 80 to almost zero. Interestingly, we find that Alameda Research, Sam Bankman-Fried, 
a cryptocurrency trading firm closely affiliated with the FTX exchange, conducted the largest amount of UST Luna swaps among anchor depositors. The swap fees and uncertainty about the execution price of Luna on exchanges seems uh, seem to have discouraged other anchor depositors from utilizing the native swap contract as an exit strategy. But Alameda Research, with its preferential access to the FTX exchange, had a competitive advantage over others. Our results demonstrate that observability and free access to the blockchain alone do not level the playing field for investors if substantial differences exist in their ability to process and interpret information. This also highlights the limitation of transparency, uh, especially for complex systems like Terra Luna. The subsidies of the Anchor Protocol were recorded on the Terra blockchain and, in principle, observable to all investors. But it is unclear to what extent, especially small investors, understood the precarious nature of UST's claim and the possible impact of UST conversion in the Luna price. So quite simply, Anchor Protocol was attacked by Alameda Research, who was then using their competitive advantage by having the FTX exchange to increase and continue to maintain value in their UST Luna pairing while the rest of the market crumbled around it and it was allowing them an exit strategy and they were swapping it back and forth, thus creating more Luna. This seems like a direct attack brought to you by Sam Bankman-Fried. Now, uh, the fact that Doquan was prosecuted, he, we should unpack that he was prosecuted because he hid the inherent problems. In May of 2021, they, they were on the verge of collapse, the, the US team. In order to prevent that, he sold an enormous amount of UST to Anchor Protocol. However, he then told investors not about uh, jump trading, I'm sorry, uh, jump trading. He, he didn't tell people about jump trading digital assets. He told them that the system had fixed itself and it had not. He lied to investors. That's why we have a problem with, with Duquan at this point. Um, is he a thief? No. Is he irresponsible? 100%. However, that brings us to uh, the rebuild, which is where we are right now. So let's unpack a little bit about what's going on, and you can get an idea and a sense of the fact that all is not lost. So next up, the Terraform Labs has reached an agreement in principle with the SEC on a settlement. Now, we will not know the terms of the settlement until June the 12th. The settlement details are unknown, uh, but the final terms must be submitted by June 12th, and the defendant will likely reduce the final penalty, penalty through negotiation. So they would not have agreed to $5.3 billion if what they were looking for was about a $10 million fine as the maximum amount. So there is no circumstance in which they're paying $5.3 billion and that they just approved it. Uh, in the meantime, that, of course, caused a surge both in Luna Classic price and for Luna price. Now, remember, these two are separate things, but they do work kind of in conjunction uh, with one another. So uh, getting an idea of what's going on in the background is inherently important to understanding how this ecosystem devolved into uh, where we are right now. So uh, hopefully that quick lesson about what happened uh, without the technical protocols, without the, the, the conspiracies in it, uh, gives you a little bit of an idea of why we're here. And it doesn't tell you how we fix it, but it does tell you uh, what went wrong. So how do we fix it? Well, we'll need a repeg at some point, and we'll need a repeg that allows for the burning of Luna Classic tokens. It would be my proposal that we do a repeg of USTC and Luna Classic. And during that process, if you buy USTC, then you hold USTC. But when you sell USTC, you sell it for Luna Classic um, or you trade it for Luna Classic. And when you do that, a small amount of USTC, uh, that's going, everything is going back in the community pool, a small piece is pulled out and it gets effectively permanently burned. And then another piece is used to buy a small amount of Luna Classic and burn a small amount of Luna Classic. Conversely, when you buy Luna Classic uh, and you swap it to USTC, the same thing will happen, uh, or any other token for that matter. When you when you sell it, a small piece 
will immediately be burned off and then a second smaller piece will be used to buy USTC and then it will burn some of the USTC. That way, no matter which trade you're doing, USTC to Luna Classic or Luna Classic USTC or wherever you're going, a small amount of USTC and Luna Classic are burned on every single transaction. Now, the centralized exchanges do not agree to these terms which presents itself as a problem. Now, how do you get over that? Well, create a vibrant ecosystem. That's where we are. And what we need to do is create this vibrant ecosystem where it is good for you to uh, participate in the trading and we don't need Binance. Now, what will it take in order for that to happen? Well, Binance burned 1.35 billion tokens. So if we can find a situation and a service of, of providence of some sort that would allow for a repeg. In this case, uh, a temporary burn protocol that would allow for a substantial burning of tokens uh, without burning off the community pools or the Oracle, then that's a great opportunity. So that's what we should be working towards, in my opinion. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you think that we should focus everything right now on getting that repeg established, not for the purpose of permanently uh, creating this, uh, th this, this situation, but for, um, at this point, a trial of finding a way to continue to burn some of the supply back and forth based on trading volume. So in, in the event that that's possible, uh, which again, there's some smart people looking into it right now, but in the event that that's possible, then perhaps that solves some of the issue. And then once we get to a certain level of uh, tokens on both chains, then we can adjust as needed. Seems pretty simple. However, the question is, how do we get there? So I don't know the answer to that. Let me know what you think, again, in the comments down below. And let's move on here just a little bit. Uh, nothing really going on in Commonwealth. And when I say that, I don't mean that there's really nothing going on. I mean that nothing for us to talk about right now. Uh, Genuine Labs maintenance proposal. Um, and then Strathcole is out here asking the questions right now so that he has an, a clear understanding about what this thing is going to read. It's not up for vote yet, but they're, they're working it through right now to figure out, you know, how do we get this done? Um, also, uh, tax to gas implementation, um, uh, upgrade the SDK. So there, there are certain things that are happening here in the background that will come up for voting at some point very soon. There is no vote other than uh, the messaging service at this point. So let's check price action. Price action. Um, guys, I can't stress any more than this. Called it uh, every step of the way. Uh, I told you guys I do think that we're you know kind of trending sideways here. It's a question of whether or not we maintain this little structure right here and continue in this upward fashion along this line. Do we break down into this range right here and then do we have a strong bounce off of that? Uh, or, or do we break this structure but don't go down and just continue to go sideways and continue to pop up there? So that's what we're watching right now as far as uh, what price action looks like now. Long term, we're looking for this big move right here. Now, this is only about 2x from where we currently are, not even that. Uh, and it would require us to break out of this to get into that realm of 3x or 4x, of course. Uh, but, I, you know, I'm not sure whether or not that's available. But we're overdue for another robust sort of move. So I do expect that pretty soon we're probably going to see some some real upward momentum. The last time we got this move, I do want to be specific here because we're looking at this and we're looking at this in a, uh, you know, we're looking at history to repeat itself, if you will. What we did not get is an immediate, just, just absolute pump. I want you to pay attention here because there was a big dip that happened right there. That dip went from uh, 14 all the way down to 11. That's a 30%, 22% uh, drawdown. Uh, where are we at right now with drawdown? Well, um, you know, I, I guess at best we could look at it this way and say that are we on the same level of drawdown? No, we're about 10%. So, you know, ironically, 20% means this line down here. So it is entirely possible that we come down for this little back test. Once we get to that back test, just like in this area, it probably becomes a buy sentiment. Um, you know, bots, market makers, they're going to recognize the structure and they're going to run this thing one more time because they want to capture. Look, they're trying to capture you in it. Remember, there's no reason 
other than the rebuild and the FOMO that's building up potentially uh, for this whole thing to uh, pop. There's no real item here that's going to make it explode. So this is based on hype. So the next piece of hype that we get could be the one that sends this thing to the stratosphere, if you will, or, or at least up to the top of this line. So I'm going to be watching for that and you should be watching for that too. USTC still maintaining its breakout of the structure that I gave you before. Remember, it came down through here. It did this uh, last time and then boom, it broke out. And where did it break out? Break out it broke out to this area. So it's probably going to do the same thing over here. Again, it's just going to be some kind of information that will pop up and then boom, uh, this thing is at six cents or six and a half cents, you know, something like that. And I did call 10 cents by the end of the year. So uh, we're still holding on for, for that move. I do think that we will get something like that happening. So um, that's kind of where everything is. Now, to bring it out, our project of the day that we want to talk about, BigBangX.io. Do you want NFT Marketplace? Because that's how you get NFT Marketplace, BigBangX.io. So there are quite a few different NFT projects that you may not know about, and it is so imperative upon you to take a few lunk and buy yourself some of these NFTs to support these projects. And if you think I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about you. That's how this ecosystem will evolve is the people who are currently invested in Luna Classic invest in some of these potential opportune um, NFTs that might be part of a game later on, or they might just be vanity at some point later on. They might have some sort of inherent future value. So let's check this out. Uh, to get started, connect your wallet, explore the collections, and then start selling and growing. Now, uh, you have collections here like Vaporlunk, uh, Lupepe Burner. You have the Sun Token Projects NFT. You've got the Lunk Cats with Hat Burn Project. Rackoff. Folks, the bull market is about to take off and you don't have enough crypto. You know how you can get more crypto? Cryptonomy.finance. Not only are they giving away up to $100,000 worth of Pepe just by you signing up for their website, but you can earn yield off of the crypto that you stake with them now. Guys, I staked 1.29 ETH. I already have 0.5 ETH in return. Uh, this expires November 21, 2024. Scheduled interest on it, 0.99 total ETH. I'm going to earn an ETH just for my staking. And let's not forget the launch pool. We've had another big win. Uh, Theta Knots Finance did a 12x. Arrow Markets did a 2x. Uh, these guys are putting out continuous multipliers, and they're getting you in for the best results on these swaps. The next few weeks... An Android app is going to launch, then an iPhone app is going to launch. Cryptonomy.finance is making it easier for you to earn yield off of your crypto simply by staking. We're going into the bull run. It's about to get crazy. That's where the millions and millions are made. Don't you want to be a part of it? Sign up for Cryptonomy.finance today. Uh, you've got Air Force Lunk. Now listen, I'm trying to get you some information about Air Force Lunk, which is an upcoming game on the Luna Classic blockchain, but I um, the, the development's taking a little bit of time, so they're still working on it in the background. But as soon as I get information on it, I will update you. But this to me seems like, I hope it's 1945 type game or something like that. I hope it's a lot of fun uh, and a big shoot 'em up Then we have Lotos 18, uh, which would appear to be some sort of racing game that most probably will, will have something. There's Lunk Soldiers over here. There's the Unlock Key 40. Uh, then there's the 1930 Bugatti Type 41 Royal. So, you know, when you're coming over here, you're looking for these pieces right here. Now, what game do you think this is going to be part of? This is a spider. Um, uh, could it be Menzo Baranzin? Could it be uh, Drizzt and uh, uh, the, 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 what do they call the Dark Elves of uh, the Forgotten Realms? Um, don't know. Uh, but we'll find out at some point. So um, you should come check this out. There's the hamster meme collection. There's the drawn cat. I love pink. When you refresh this, it gives you a little bit more so that you can kind of see what some of these things are. So I would just recommend that you go to bigbangx.io. Try this out. You know, buy yourself an NFT, something like that. Show support to the community. If you show support to the community, then the community at some point, of course, reverses that and shows support to you. Now let's close this out with a little price action, 28 million in trading volume, uh, 13 million in trading volume for USTC. So there's still some strong sentiment, but it, it, it has waned over time. 
this is a testament to some of the retail. That retail is in meme coins right now. Uh, Luna Classic, until further notice, probably considerably a meme coin, if you will. Um, even though we know, you know, I know that that's not really the, the case, the broader market still thinks that. So until that changes, then we're kind of in that meme coin space. So again, the investment will kind of come full circle at some point. Cosmos under the radar again right now, not really you know, at the forefront. What's at the forefront? AI, real world assets, DPIN, uh, probably gaming coming back around at some point pretty soon. So there are certain pieces that are just not in vogue at this moment. And one of them uh, is, you know, Terra Luna Classic and the Cosmos ecosystem and Atom. But that will change at some point soon. And when that changes and you know, we start to get retail pumping into this, then you're going to see, you know, some significant growth. So, um, that's all I got. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, trip down memory lane, if you will, and uh, hopefully you learned a little something that you didn't know before. And if you did, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe button, bell to be notified of future content, and we'll talk to you again very, very soon.